Welcome to Gratitude Geek, the relationship marketing podcast for micropreneurs building lasting, genuine relationships with clients, colleagues, and community. I'm your host, Candice Rodardi, and today I'm joined by Donna Sadula. Shit. It's Sadula, Sadula right? Sadula. Sadula. Okay. Like a doula. Sadula. Okay. Like Abdullah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm your like host. Dracula. Jack Dracula. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. This is holy crap. There's a lot of bloopers and we haven't even gotten the fifth, past the first sentence. I'm your host, Candice Rodardi, and today I'm joined by Donna Sadula. Donna pioneered LinkedIn profile optimization, realizing its potential beyond a resume. She shares tips on standing out, listing skills, building brands, and leveraging LinkedIn for success. As founder of Vision Board Media, she helps individuals and companies tell their stories online. Donna's website, linkedin-makeover.com, transforms lives through future-forward career branding. With two editions of LinkedIn Profile Optimization for Dummies, she's featured in Forbes Business Insider, Times Money section, and the Wall Street Journal. Donna's expertise empowers people to dream big and seize opportunities. Welcome, Donna. Thank you so much for having me, Candace. So tell us your story. How did you get to where you are today? And I just think it's hilarious. Before we even do that, it's really hilarious because I recently met someone who wrote one of the very first For Dummies books. Was it DOS for Dummies? Uh, it might have been DOS for Dummies. Hold on. I, I would have to really think. I'd have to go back in my in my way, way brain to remember what it was. Because I yeah. think DOS for Dummies was the first Dummies it, book. It might have been DOS for Dummies. And she and her husband wrote it together. And ladies and gentlemen, I will put that in the show notes right now. I'm having a brain fart. Can't remember her name. <laughs> she and her husband wrote it together. Her husband wrote it. And then she read it to make sure that dummies would understand it. So she edited it as the dummy part and he wrote it as the expert part. Now, Isn't that I, a great idea? That is fabulous because they have, when I, when they, when they asked me to write the four dummies book, they, I had to actually take like a test to see if I, if I, if I could write, <laughs> luckily I, I could, but then I was part partnered with a copy editor who did like, I would write as much as I could in that four dummy style, but then a writer would come in after me and make sure because they, they're really big with, um, Garen's and other ways of like, everything had to be like a verb with an ING. It's, it's very, very specific, you know, to write a four yeah. dummies book. It's not, it's not just, it's your voice. It's the four dummies voice. Yeah. So whatever she did, she was the very first person that, you know, injected that that active yeah. voice that they have and they're known I, for. I love it. I love it. Okay. So we've skipped ahead <laughs> before we, before we skip for ahead any further, we were talking about leapfrogging before the interview started, before we leapfrog ahead, tell us your story. How did you get to where you are today? How did I get to where I am today? You know, it was, um, it, it was a fun journey. And I've been doing this since 2009. And, uh, you know, I was an employee for a very long time, worked in corporate America. And um, I got into a very high pressured sales role, a dog eat dog, like, you know, 80 cold calls before noon every day type of job. And I'm so grateful for that experience because it really taught me the power of of networking and relationship building. And because at that time I was selling, I was a reseller. And so my competitors were selling the exact same product as I was. <laughs> so you start to realize that, wait, I'm no longer selling the product. I'm actually selling myself because I'm the differentiator. So all of that sort of came together and I decided that I was done working for corporate America tired of patting other people's pockets. I wanted to go out on my own. I wanted to be a grown up. I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I wanted to make a difference. And in 2009, I did just that. I uh, started my, my company. Um, back then I wasn't dreaming very big and I had like a really silly name for it because it was just like, it was just like, just me. And, um, and we outgrew it. <laughs> pretty fast. And so I named it, uh, I, I renamed my company Vision Board Media. 
And for me, it's, it's, that really encapsulates who we are and what we are, what we do. It's, it's, we are that vision board, but we're also a board of people who help our clients. And it's all about really transforming your future and getting you to where you want to be and telling your story. And, and, and we tell people stories who help brand them. So that's what we do. And I can't hear a word you're saying, girl. It's called a hum. Mute button on. I mute myself when I'm not talking because I, I'll interrupt you. So, um, oh, wait, I lost my train of thought. Okay. You started off as a solopreneur and now you have 20 employees. No, I have 20. I have a stable of 20 stable. writers. A stable of 20. Oh, they're not employees. It's a team. Writers and, and coaches and consultants. Yes. I love it. And what do you offer to the the world? What is the product that you offer to the world? We, we are known for writing LinkedIn profiles. We are known for our resumes and our bios and our, you know, we also work with companies. So, so basically it's not like, it's not to me, it's not just the LinkedIn profile. It's the brand that we're, we're helping forge and articulate. And, and so as some companies brand products or companies, we brand people. And so individuals may say, Hey, I need help with my brand, but sometimes the companies will say, we need you to help our, our employees and their brands. So we, we kind of go in either way. Yeah. I love that. I love that a company is, is, uh, investing in their employees, LinkedIn profiles, because that seems counterintuitive. Like, why would I want my employees to look better on LinkedIn where they could get recruited away from me? But I, I talked to somebody on the, on the, I interviewed someone on the podcast a while back and she said that she hires the best people she can possibly afford right now because she knows that the best people are going to get recruited away as, as soon as possible, but she wants to learn everything she can from them. And I thought that's a beautiful way of looking at it. Yeah. Well, there's that Zig Ziglar quote that says, uh, the, the worst thing. So, so the worst thing is, um, because a lot of, a lot of business owners are like, I don't want to train my people. If I train my people, I'll, I'll lose them. Right. They'll, they'll get poached. So as Zig Ziglar said, the worst thing, the worst thing other than training your employees and losing them is, and, and losing them is, is not training them and keeping them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and I, I I see that too because, you know, in in with LinkedIn, you know, we want we like people are looking, you know, and and especially for if you're if you are a job candidate, you want to work at a company that has great people, you know, mm -hmm. so you're gonna look and see who's who am I gonna be working alongside? I I want to work here because these people are interesting and intriguing, and they've got a brand, and they're you know they offer so much. So you attract better job candidates as a company, but you know at the same time you're also going to invest. You're going to attract better, better prospects and clients and partnerships and investors because they're all looking, mm -hmm. right? And if yeah. all of your employees look like they're 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 job seekers, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a put off. Yeah, I um, I work. I'm working with a client right now who has a she's on the staff for a for a company, a small company that has a handful of employees. And she basically manages the social media. And I'm like, well, why don't you have a business profile on LinkedIn for the company? She goes, do I need one? And I said, well, if the company has people who work for it, yeah, you kind of need one. Uh, so that was kind of an epiphany because a lot of people, a lot of small people, pe not small people, yeah. but people in small businesses don't understand how powerful LinkedIn is. As a coach, when I go and I network with other coaches, inevitably, the next time I log into LinkedIn, I have 10 people who've sent me friend requests or not LinkedIn, what LinkedIn connections, right? Because the people who are at that level are networking at that level, right? So LinkedIn is really important. Do you want to touch right, on that? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to teach you something. Yeah, I'd love to hear this. All right. So were you networking in, in, in person or were you networking? No, virtual. Okay. Okay. I don't do any in-person networking. Or if you're networking even virtually, and we could do this now, if my son did not steal my phone, he stole my, oh, wait, did he steal my phone? I don't even have my phone on me right now. I'm still going to, well, anyway, let's pretend I had my phone on me. Mm -hmm. Do you know the QR code on LinkedIn? Oh, see, I don't ever network in person. So yeah, share this because <laughs> can you do this virtually? You can do this virtually. You can hold up your we phone. We can do it virtually. I want to do it right now with you. Just give me a second. My phone's, my phone is over here. Hold on. 
do 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 all right all right we're doing this we're doing this right now i wish you had your phone on i don't have my phone on that it would prove it it would prove it um but so what i'm going to do is i am uh getting into linkedin i am going to click on the search button there's a search bar whatever you want to call it okay and the what, magnifying you, glass yeah once you tap on it then there's going to be a qr code that appears on the corner and you just got to tap that and Brilliant. so now i can hold this up and you would just take yours and click scan and you'd be able to go straight to my profile. and so i would i would actually use my linkedin profile to scan, I would use the app on my phone to scan mm-hmm. your QR code with the app. That mm-hmm. is brilliant. I mean, you can even just take a picture of it. I mean, yeah. anyone could take a picture of this and they would see my profile would pop up for them. So what you could do is take, take this down, just take a picture of it and use it. Just like, you can just pull, maybe make it your background graphic. Or something. <laughs> oh, what a great but idea. You could, have, you, could, you could, you could, you could immediately connect with these people. You wouldn't have to wait until they connected with you. You could do it right then and there on the spot. If you're doing speaking engagements at the very end, give them that and say to everybody, open up your phones and take a picture of this QR code. It'll go straight to your, your LinkedIn profile. You can connect or follow with all of those people right then and there. I have a pro tip for that. So there is an app that if you're on Zoom, if your presentation is on Zoom, there is an app called Prezi. And Prezi lets you pull up photos that are just sitting right next to you on the screen. So it's Prezi, Prezi, Prezi video for, for Zoom. So the picture would just be sitting right here. Put the QR code on, on a graphic and just pull it up at the end of the meeting so it's sitting next to you when it's when you want ready to do your call to action. Um, Love it. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are watching the video, if you're not watching the video, you're not going to get this visual, but I'm not pulling up a QR code right now because I don't have one handy, but I am going to pull up Elmo because Elmo's cute. So just imagine that Elmo is the QR code. There you go. Isn't that brilliant? So that's how your QR code would work. I love that. Love and it. I am going to implement that ASAP. Because I yeah, do a like, lot why of wait? networking. Yeah. Why wait? Because half the people, either you're not going to forget who they were or they're going to forget you. You're going to miss people in that heat of the moment. So put out, pull out the QR code and just, just connect. Yeah. I love that. And I use QR codes a lot because I do a lot of virtual networking. So I have QR codes to my virtual business card. I have QR codes for my power team. If you want to come visit my power, I have QR codes for everything. So I love this. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'm ready to learn. So what else do you want to teach me? Oh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a lot that I need to teach you, but <laughs> let's, let's talk about what your audience needs to know and what. We yeah. That's the thing. Um, Listener, you are probably a solopreneur or a micropreneur. You are a one woman, one or one man show. And you're thinking to yourself, I don't need LinkedIn. And I'm here to tell you you're wrong. And Donna's going to back me up on that. You know, it, here's the thing. If, if, if your business is, depends upon connections and relationships, there is a very good chance that LinkedIn could work for you. If you are selling to businesses, that's also a really good sign. Um, you know, if you're doing a lot of, you know, if it's really, you know, you're just selling just to, to people, you know, it depends upon that person, right? If the person is a high level executive or professional, again, another really good sign that LinkedIn is, is a good option for you. I don't want you to think that it takes, it takes over for Instagram or, or TikTok or Facebook, because there are certain audiences that are very active and work very well on those platforms. But, you know, even if you know, even in that situation, LinkedIn is still something I think to, to spend some time because LinkedIn's profile is the most robust profile out there. Yeah. And it allows you to really tell your story in, in a manner that's, that's, that, that's, that's not truncated. It's not collapsed. I mean, it's there. I mean, you mm-hmm. can trace your trajectory and, and they give you the, the ability to really talk directly to 
your reader and say who you are and what you do and how you help. Like we talk about vulnerability. We talk about, you know, the importance of why, well, here's, here's a platform where you can explore those concepts and really, you know, showcase your value and why you're different and who you are and why people should, should want to work with you. So that I think is, is a really important thing. And with LinkedIn in some ways, not always, but in some ways you can have a lot of passive success just by having that really strong profile. Yeah. Yeah. So before we dig into that, I want to share that I just learned how to upload documents as a post. <laughs> like this morning, I think I did my very first one. I think it was this morning I did my very first one. And I, you know, I did the four types of procrastination and how to overcome them as a PDF document that you can scroll through. Oh it's my so goodness. Cool. I, You're now on the carousel. <laughs> no, no other, no other platform does that. You can't upload a PDF to any other platform like that. It's great. And no other platform lets you do newsletters. No other platform lets you write an actual article with photos, with multiple photos. LinkedIn is the only platform that does all of those things. Yeah. And have a great looking profile and ask for recommendations and, and give recommendations. Yeah. So let's talk about how to, how to make your profile look good. What are, what are the, like the bare minimums? And then like the, let's do the, you get a C if you have your profile like this, you're going to B if you have your profile like this, and you'll get an A plus if you have your profile like this. So to me, the least, the least amount of work is, is really just optimizing the intro card, the very top part of the profile. That is the least that you should do. All right. And, and what is the intro card? It's your profile picture. It's your background graphic. It's your <clears throat> excuse me, your headline, and then making sure that your contact information is in there. If you do it on your mobile phone, you can even use, an, you can print, you can upload um, the, your, your name pronunciation and give a little bit of an elevator pitch too, which is nice. Um, and you can also, um, you can also put pronouns if you want Wait, to. Hold the phone for the name pronunciation section. You can use that for a, like an elevator pitch instead of just mm-hmm. your name. Yeah. It's, How it's long do you have to record? 10 full seconds, which is quite a bit of time. I'm Candice Rodardi and I help solopreneurs get shit done. I can say that in 10 seconds. You can even say that slowly. And still- <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's happening. Okay. I'm doing two things. <laughs> wow. Donna's giving me a to-do list, y'all. I hope you're paying attention and taking notes. All right. Keep going. All right. Let's go back to the headline. The headline really needs to grab people's attention. It's 220 characters, so you've got a lot of space. You also want to infuse it with your keywords because it helps in colliding with, uh, you know, opportunities in terms of like the search results. If you want to pop up in your in search results, figure out what those keywords are and put them into your headline. It's a really good way of just optimizing your profile. So well, let's you know. dig, dig deeper into that. So you're searching for yourself and finding out what keywords people are using to find you. Mm-mm. Or no. Okay. How are we doing? No, this? because you can't really search for yourself because when you search LinkedIn, it, you're searching your network and your network is unique. Everyone's network is different. So you're never going to see where you turn up in anyone's search results. The only way that you can really determine that you're showing up well is that you're getting, you're getting hits. Your people are viewing your profile. That's really the only way of testing it. Um, but what I'm saying is really think in terms of a, like, what do you want to be found for? You know, is it, um, you know, I'm just trying to think, is it, is it relationship marketing? Is it, um, you know, is it virtual assistance? Is it you know, like, what, where, what would that person be searching for if they needed your help, but they didn't know you existed? Like, what is, what are those words? And those are the words that you want to use. And those are the words that are going to appear right underneath your name, underneath your photo in mm-hmm. at the head of the yeah. So there's a tagline. And you can, you can, you know, put in a couple keywords, you can have your title, a couple keywords, and then you can have like a little benefit statement. I love it. I love it. And, but understanding what the, and you have, you have, a, there's a good number of characters that you can put there. 220. So here's yeah. the thing. If, yeah. If you, you can visit my website, linkedin-makeover.com. And I have a headline generator and it will generate a headline for you. You just have to fill in a couple things and it'll spit one out. That's really sexy. A link to that will be in the show notes, (laughs) y'all. 
Wow. What a great tool. Uh, and if you're one of my coaching clients, you would have already received that link because I was going to, I'm going to send it out immediately after this interview. <laughs> I love Yay. it. Okay. So you've got your, you've got, well, let's talk about the photos. So you've got your profile photo and your, you've got the header photo. Let's talk about what those should look like. So the profile photo, you know, it would be great if it was professionally taken. I think it's, it's a good thing to do. I, there's a lot of people who really, they, they still like resist. It's almost like there's too much vanity or something associated with it. But I really do think if everyone's going to see you, like make sure you're presenting yourself in the best possible way. If you, if you I, I, well, I'm going to interrupt you. So my friend, Deb is a professional headshot photographer, Deb Davis. I'll put a link to her in the show notes as well. If you're in the Detroit area, she um, has a story that she likes to tell about one of her clients whose profile picture was taken in the bathroom as a selfie and you could see the toilet in the image and she couldn't figure out why she wasn't getting hired for a job. I guess she wasn't a plumber, huh? <laughs> I've, I've seen, I have seen so many doozies over the years. So many doozies. I remember there was one, it was a, an executive and he had like a goose, like perched on his shoulder. It, it made no sense. He wasn't, yeah. you know, like there's yeah. so, there was so many, there's, they're getting better. They really are getting better. They're not nearly as horrifying as they used to be. I had, um, I, I, I admit I had a profile photo once. I might even still have it some, in some places when my cat was a kitten, I was, I had my, I was, I had my headphones on my microphone in front of me and I took a picture of myself as a podcaster, but the cat decided she, he wanted to perch on my shoulder at just that moment. And it was so cute. I decided to use it, but I'm like, what's the cat have to do with my podcast? <laughs> so yeah, I've even made mistakes, but you know, <sighs> In some ways, in some ways, like that's awesome and it's memorable <laughs> and it's kind of silly. And in a weird way, it's kind of on brand, mm -hmm. you know, like, like it doesn't, nothing has to be perfect. And, and if, if you, if, if like your brand is a little edgy or different, like embrace it, you know, like it doesn't always have to be one way or the highway. But I would just, I would always say, just make it as clear, you know, like we don't want it grainy. We don't want it dark. You know, you, you want it to be in the best quality, even if it is, you know, I remember, I remember some woman, part, part of her uh, identity was that she would like wore a big red cowboy hat. Like you wear that cowboy hat. That's cool. That's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, the background graphic is another place that you can really go crazy with. And, um, you know, you can go onto Canva you know, and create like a montage, you can upload, you know, your team, you can upload pictures of your products, like anything goes there. But you know, what I really want is that when a person looks at it, they immediately know who you are and what you do. Yeah. So, you know, I was just talking earlier to, um, this team who represents this author, this really big, big, big wig author, and his profile was all about his books, but he wanted more keynote speaking engagements. I'm like, well, guess what? You've got to change the goal of their profile. You know, even though you're an author, you have to also let them know that you do keynote speaks speeches, yeah. you know, so you really need to think how, how do I, how do I want to be perceived? What do I, what do I want to be known for? So putting a photo of him speaking on stage as the profile or the uh, header photo is, would be better. Do you suggest that people write on those header photos or just leave them a photo? I see it both. I don't mind if it's like a quick quote, you know, emblazoned, but when it's like, visit my website and text me and email me and go to these three different, like there's sometimes they put far too much information. I'm like, make let the person scroll down to get that information. <laughs> Give them a reason to scroll, you yeah. know? So yeah, I don't think you need to put a lot in there. I think some people just put far too much, um, but I don't, I don't mind a logo. I don't mind a little quote. I don't mind. I don't mind any of that stuff. It, it's what, what, what resonates with you? What is going to, what is going to resonate with your target audience? And well, like you said, he was, he was an author who wanted more keynote presentations. So he also sort of was steering the, 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 what the looker, the looker, the, <laughs> the, the, the follower in the right direction with his background photo too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, keep in mind, you know, he still has other social 
Are you there? I am. What happened? I don't know. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Perhaps at a later time. Goodbye, Rainbow, and stay groovy.